Yo, what is going on guys? It's Cryptic TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. And today we're going to be talking about the Bentley Continental GT3. Um, using the custom BOP, I was pretty sure I was going to use this for the upcoming AOR season. I did decide to change my mind at the last minute, but still I'm going to run through some of the things you need to do in the setup to really get the Bentley to work because it is still quite a tricky car to drive, man. And it is a shame because I didn't make this custom livery, but... I just felt like there were too many aspects of the Bentley that I thought over a season would probably annoy me more than anything. And um, I was pretty sure as well that whenever it did come to sort of wet races or interchangeable weather races, that I personally think the Bentley's going to struggle um, in those conditions. But let's get stuck into the video and see what I did to get a pretty strong time in the AOR hot stint challenge um, with the Bentley. So if we quickly go through the hot stints, you can see... You scroll down to me, I'm right here in 24th position. But you can see, I, I think I'm the only person that used a Bentley on the whole front page. If I go through all the cars here, um, Matteo De Campo actually doing his hot lap in the Honda, which is pretty good to see as well. Um, if we scroll down, keep scrolling. Yes, I'm pretty sure I was the only person that used a Bentley to um, do my hot lap for, for, for Barcelona. And what you can see is my actual overall time, a five minute... 10 seconds point six was actually pretty competitive with with most of the top half of the field you can see i think i was only you know i matched pretty much the guy that finished 12th and that's because with the bentley what i found is that you can pretty much do the same lap time over and over and over and over again without too much um bother really i think with, with the car being so much lighter i believe that you can literally just do the same lap time for me personally it felt like I could continue doing those laps and with it missing 40 kilograms or minus 40 kilograms, I believe the Bentley is going to be maybe quite nice on its tires and it is quite a nice car on its tires already. But the downside to the Bentley is I feel like its overall um, lap time potential is not as high as a lot of the other cars. Now you can see some of the other guys were able to do, for instance, Joshua Allen was able to do a 42 six was it's about eight temps faster than what I was able to do. And um, you can see he managed to keep his lap times pretty fast as well. So in the end, about two seconds over three laps, which is quite a big gap. Now, I feel like you probably had to make a lot of that back with um, tire wear over a whole stint. But I just felt like some of the tracks that we have in the calendar, I'm not sure the Bentley's going to be that strong. I tested it at Circuit of the Americas, and to be honest, it was absolutely nowhere. And um, yeah, around Circuit of the Americas, it's a long lap as well. And even though, you know, you could say tire wear should bring it back, I think people are going to be able to survive for half an hour before they have to change their tires. So for me, it was definitely a struggle. I got in the Aston and I was way faster instantly. And I just thought, even if you have good tire wear, starting further back in the, in the grid all the time, you're definitely going to struggle, which again is the downside for the Bentley. Looking at some of the tracks, I think the Bentley will be good at Kailami. It may end up being good at Monza as well because it's a lot lighter, so it's probably going to be pretty fast down the straights. But for me, tracks like Mazzano, you know, where you need a lot of traction and stuff, and we're going to get stuck into the traction of the Bentley and what I feel like you need to do to actually get it to work. Um, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. But let's actually get stuck into the setup of the car so I can show you guys a bit about what I change and the changes that I feel like work the most for the Bentley. So here we are in the Bentley. <clears throat> if you come across to timetable, you can see the minus 40 kg that the Bentley has for the custom BOP around Barcelona. Um, and for me, there is sort of, there's sort of two different ways to set the Bentley up. Um, I'm going to show you the, the setup that I ended up using in the end. And then um, you can see we're still running the minus 0 0.4 toe minus toe on the rear as well now the tc i think between two and four is probably the sweet spot for me two is probably a little bit faster through the middle sector because the bentley doesn't have a very good traction control system so you kind of want to use you kind of don't want to you don't want the bent you don't want the uh the tc in the bentley to really be kicking in because it does bog down quite a lot but at the same time the bentley does have a lot of torque so the setup that I'm using is sort of based around making the traction a little bit more manageable without having to use higher TC settings. 
Um, I did find though in the last sector that TC4 was a little bit more to my liking. That might just be because I've got a lead foot and probably not the greatest at controlling the throw inputs. I have seen some people using zero TC in the Bentley, which is insane. I can only imagine what their setups are looking like. But there are people using zero TC. For me, between two and four is still okay. It was able to get me a pretty good hot stick time, so I was happy with it. Um, Again, we come across to the mechanical grip. You can see I'm running the wheel rate really low um, on the rear, the front a little bit higher. And that is because this theoretically should give you quite a bit of understeer, but my aero balance, the rear ride height is pretty high. So I've got quite a lot of rake on the Bentley as well. Um, we'll talk more about that once I do a lap or so. Um, again, what you could also do is you can put the rear wheel rate up. Now, this is going to make the car a little bit more sketchy in the high speed stuff. You're going to be getting wheel spin um, through turn three. Uh, that's what I noticed when you put the, the rear wheel rate up on the Bentley. It does give you a lot more sort of rotation, but it sometimes is over rotation, which a lot of time does cause the TC to kick in and then it bogs down, then you lose time. So it's such a fine balance with this car. It's one of the main reasons why I didn't actually choose it in the end is because it felt like I'm, you know, I'm going to be having to do this all season long, trying to find the perfect balance, which is pretty, pretty difficult. Um, coming across to the dampers now, you might have seen this a lot. You know, people maxing the um, rear rebound, the fast rebound out. For me in the Bentley, it didn't necessarily work when you pull it to max. Um, so I, I, I put it to 30 and 38 and it seemed to just rotate a little bit more naturally. Wasn't sort of, I can explain it. Before when I put it to max, it just, the rotation just felt off. It just didn't feel right at all. I couldn't do a, a decent middle sector. I couldn't even get into the into the 39 to the middle sector. And then I just, you know, I lowered the, the rebound, the fast rebound rear settings a little bit. And it felt a lot more alive to me. Um, that's what I've gone with. But again, as I said, there's pretty much two ways you can do the, the rear wheel rate. I've done this because, you know, I just feel like the, the traction is a little bit more important especially when once you get towards the last sector you, you you do want a lot of traction in the car because you know that's where you're going to struggle through the chicane at the end um and it, it took me a while i was sort of stuck on around about like a 43 8 i was stuck there for a good couple of days and then i managed to find something which gave me like another four temps and um i was able to sort of give the give the put in the lap times that i did for the hot stint and once you do get a good setup literally the um it's very comfortable to drive once you do get a good setup it's easy to do the same lap times over and over again it's not really a big struggle i do feel like that's where the strength of the bentley is going to be not so much in the in the one lap sort of qualifying or the the, the hot lap sort of situations i feel like the bentley is going to struggle more and that's that's where you know i didn't really want to have that struggle with the Bentley because if you're starting way down the field, even if you've got good pace in AOR, the field spread's going to be insane. And, you, you know, it's going to be, you know, not everyone's easy to overtake as well. So even if you do have good tire and stuff like that, if you're starting towards the back all the time, you are going to be struggling quite a lot. But let's do some laps and we can compare the two different, um, two different setup options that I've put together. So here's a lap of Barcelona. This is with the uh, lower rear wheel rate. And um, you can, you'll can you probably notice still in some sections where we're still getting quite a lot of wheel spin. Um, you'll see once we get to turn three, even with TC on four, we're getting wheel spin through, um, wheel spin in third gear. So over this curb, that can be quite a little bit difficult for the Bentley because it does make the traction control kick in a little bit. But now as I get back on the power, I'm still having to slightly correct the car because I'm still getting wheel spin. And that's where the Bentley is a little bit difficult to find that balance. Pretty much everywhere else over the track is sort of nicely, nicely balanced. But that is the one area where you're going to have to find that correct balance to really nail your first sector times. 
Um, of course, this lap isn't as quick as what I did for the hot stint. It's about three tenths off. But I still think it does show you some of the pros and cons of using this sort of setup. You can see a little bit of understeer through the faster corners and even through here as well. Probably not able to get on the power as, as quick as I would want. I'm really running out wide because, you know, the front end isn't turning in as much. But then when you get to the slower corners, it does feel a little bit more stable. And you can get on the throttle out of the slow corners without too much bother. And that's where I feel like, you know, using the lower rear wheel rate does sort of help you for the last sector because the balance is always feels like it's there. You can kind of push into the corners a little bit more. And um, as I said, for me, getting the last sector right is pretty important. Um, you can sort of fluke a middle sector and get a, get a fast middle sector um, with this setup, but it's going to be harder for the majority of the time trying to nail that um, that middle sector. So you can see we did a 43.7. Now I'm going to switch up to the the other setup that I tried and see the pros and cons also of that, that way of setting up the car. So if we come across this setup, now I'm going to make some of the other changes. So I'm actually going to put the front a little bit softer. I'm going to put that down a little bit. And um, I'm going to go stiffer on the rear wheel rate. Which is pretty much this is the two sort of the two things that I had been trying. They were both successful in their own right, but one made me feel more comfortable than the other. I'm going to put the preload down. Now we're going to drop the, um, we're going to drop the rear ride height. And that, that is to sort of, you know, minimize the effect of the oversteer that I'm putting into the car by stiffening up a lot of the, um, the rear, the rear mechanical grip of the car. So let's see, I'm actually going to put this up to 800 as well. Let's see, um, what lap time we can achieve. Now going for another lap again, um, with this setup, I can definitely feel the wheel spin. It's a little bit more, um, a little bit more difficult to control, but it does sort of have the rotation that you actually want. Um, I feel like definitely through, through the first corner, it feels a little bit better, but the amount of wheel spin you get through turn three, I kind of feel like it sort of negates turn one and turn two because you can always feel the car sipping away. You kind of got a counter steer through the corner and that's what I think loses you a tad bit of time. Um, again, through this corner, the nose is, what it is, I feel the nose is a little bit nicer. The rear end is a little bit harder to control. So you sort of got to find that balance. What I was saying before, um, corners like this, I feel like the traction on the other setup is a little bit better. Again, through this next corner as well, the traction could be better. You kind of have to feather the throttle a little bit more. You can see, I think I, I upshift slightly earlier um, through that corner, but this corner is way nicer on the setup. Way nicer, I can get on the accelerator earlier and it doesn't feel like the car is about to understeer. It feels under control. The last sector, however, you can sort of nail it the same, but it does feel slightly more difficult. The back end does tend to slide a little bit more but you can use that sometimes to rotate the car around a little bit if you can, you know, sort of gather it all up on the throttle. But for the most part, um, it really is these these last two, last three corners where you can lose a lot of time, man. You see I run out slightly wide, but still allows me to carry the speed through. The lap time was an improvement. I can tell you as well, on the next lap, I was actually two temps up on this lap, but I actually messed up the um, the hairpin in the last sector. So, of course, never managed to get the lap time that I wouldn't have wanted. I think I, I actually ended up, I ended up with another point six, I believe, on the final lap where I completely and utterly just messed up the last sector. As you can see, I did a almost, almost, you know, a tenth and three quarters slower. So the last lap was probably going to be a point five, I would imagine. Um, which was pretty close to the lap time I did for the hot stint. Um, as I said, man, it's definitely a car that you have to work on. It's not that easy to to get the lap time. And that's what, why I sort of steered away from using the Bentley because of how difficult it is 
or how difficult it can be to actually produce a lap time when you've only got a short qualifying session you've got 40 cars on track i can only imagine what it's going to be like in aor i didn't want to put myself in that position to be starting you know close to the back all the time and then you know having bad qualifying sessions and having to try and make it up in the race with the bentley probably having you know superior tire advantage and maybe superior race pace we don't know that yet but um yeah it just it just would have been a mess but as i said guys those are the ways you can sort of for me the ways that i was able to get the best feeling out of the bentley some people might have a totally different setup or for for the cars but for me that sort of was you know how i could get the the best feeling out of the car i did try as well i tried nine wing which i feel like can also work if you were to go on nine wing i'd probably say maybe lower this down um also go down on the rear wheel rate lower that maybe go down on the rear ride height and that should be that um maybe you can get away with free free brake ducts here as well um and again that may be a solution um but as i said guys man it's it's a tricky car it's definitely going to be fast i'm not sure how many people are going to use it in the season because they probably fear the same things that i do it'll be interesting though if we do see some bentley's in the field it will be interesting to see how they get a lot get along i do think they're going to be super fast down the straights just because it just weighs so much less from what i'm hearing as well that the minus 40 kg that you see um here people are saying that it actually equates to more than just four temps so um if that is the case that should benefit the racing a lot better um for the upcoming season but we shall see guys i will be in the aston um that is a car i've picked i'm still deciding which livery to go for so um you guys make sure you vote on my latest community post i've seen a lot of guys liking the black livery i actually prefer the white one if i'm honest um maybe i'll show you guys quickly maybe i can show you guys quickly um i do prefer the white one for whatever reason maybe i can maybe i'll upload both and sort of have a uh <laughs> special occasion livery right so we've got that one which is the one that i do prefer it actually took me a while to make this um and then we have the black version which is pretty cool as well but again in nighttime races you're probably not going to be able to see it as well but we shall see maybe in the nighttime races i'll, I'll run the white livery um and in, in the in the daytime races i'll run the black we shall see Anyway, guys, man, I hope you did enjoy the video. I hope you did get something out of it as well. Um, all you guys needing help with the Bentley. I'm sorry I'm not in the Bentley, man. I did what I could. That's why I'm pretty much giving you guys the formula that I used to uh, to get the time out of the Bentley. But anyway, guys, Cryptic TMG, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to catch my videos first. And peace. <laughs>